It's the most classical NES game of all. Welcome back, folks, to my very special Nesmus. Uh, today, we are playing uh, the game that was voted on in the category of classic Nesmus games. Uh, well, well, classic NES games. Oh, my God. I'm calling Nintendo games Nesmus games now. I really have been cooped up in this virtual room for too long. Well, I think that's a good thing. Uh, so the, the options were for this one, uh, I guess I don't have them all in my uh, little virtual library here, but they were Mega Man 2, Metroid, Adventure Island 2, and the winner, Bubble Bobble. Uh, and so today we're going to be playing some, some Double B. Interestingly enough, I think I played Bubble Bobble on my channel a long time ago. I've forgotten though. It's very easy to forget. Um, because so much time has passed, so I think this is one of the ones that snuck by me is one I'd already played, but eh, whatever got voted on, we're gonna play it anyway. You know what? There's no harm in playing a Nintendo game twice in your life. So, you know, maybe we'll even get crazy and one day play a game a third time. Who knows? You know, just rotating bubble bobble here. We'll slam it in. Um, and yes, yeah, still snowy outside. You know, we've been playing in the evening time. Um, I say, why don't we fast forward this baby to daytime? There we go. Eight in the morning. That's a little early, actually. What time did you usually wake up and play video games? Actually, you know what? Here's something about me. When I was a kid on Saturday mornings, I would wake up at like seven in the morning and run down to play Nintendo. So I would get up at like six or seven in the morning. It was so ridiculous. I was so obsessed with gaming. Also, like there's that uh, feeling you get, you know, when you start gaming. So hold on, let's see if we can do this. You start gaming and it's like midnight, one in the morning, and then you game so long that eventually the sun starts to rise. Oh my God, look at this. This is like sun rising light. And then you think, oh my God, I've been up so late. But then if you keep it going for a bit, then eventually it's just like full on morning and you miss, you miss the chance to sleep. Have you guys ever done that? I definitely have. I've talked about it on the channel before. But anyway, what's a good, how about, uh, about 10.30 in the morning? That's a good time. There we go. I'm actually looking at the digital clock here. It's easier to tell the time. I can read analog clocks, but I don't know. Digitals are just simpler. Uh, anyway, all right, 10.30 in the morning. Beautiful Nesmus morning here. Uh, the well, the reason I have been keeping it nighttime when we've been playing is to keep all the, uh, the lights on in the neighborhood. But uh, you can see the neighbors turn them off during the day. But uh, that's okay. Anyway. Um, you guys are here for games, not for a little tour of my virtual bedroom here. So let's, uh, get right to the action here today. Bubble El Bobo. El Bobble. Actually, let's make it even later in the day so it's even brighter in the room. Go for like, I guess it only gets so bright in the winter. Oh, look at that, like the snow falling and stuff. Is it snowing where you guys are? Definitely, like, being from a more northern-ish climate. People have this perception that Canada is way far north, but, like, you know, Toronto is, like, farther south than something like 20% of the U.S. or something. So it's, like, southwestern Ontario, where a lot of people in Ontario live, is actually fairly south, uh, relatively speaking. We still get a lot of snow and stuff. But yeah, just that is like totally a Christmas scene in my mind. Anyway, uh, we are here to play some Bubble Bobble, so let's do it. Line up a face, press that face right up against the TV, and let's go, kid. Um, all right, let's just go level one. Now is the beginning of a fantastic story. Let us make the journey to the Cave of Monsters. If there's a cave called the Cave of Monsters, you should definitely avoid that. Because it's probably where you're going to die. Although we just got a necklace that's pretty sweet. Oh, God. I forget how to play this game, even. I think you just do that. You bubble them, and then you bobble them. And then you bilp them. Yay. Hey, we've got a little glare in the TV here. How can I fix this? I think... 
Um, if I just adjust my positioning here. Oh my god, I'm totally gonna die. Okay, let's go like... I'm getting like some stutter on my computer here. Alright, hopefully the stutter calms down. Oh, there we go. Yes! Get bubbled and get bobbled. Well, that one guy's gonna become free at the top. Not on my watch, buddy! Get out of here! Now, Bubble Bobble was an arcade game, was it not? Am I mistaken in thinking that? Pretty sure it was an arcade game. I know we definitely played the sequel to Bubble Bobble, which is Rainbow Island, which is kind of nothing like Bubble Bobble. Yeah, get out of here. I was saying for Nuts and Milk that Nuts and Milk reminds me of the early days of the NES when all the games had uh, black boxes and stuff like that. I feel like Bubble Bobble reminds me of that era as well. It's like an early NES kind of kind of game. Oh, get the apple! Oh, we're gonna lose the apple, aren't we? Oh, wait. Oh, oh I was stuck on the wall there. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, they're coming to kill me! They bubbled my bobble! Oh, that's it! Password is Bib! That's it, eh? Can we just continue? Continue. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I, I think it's not just the, whoops, the gameplay that uh, reminds me of the early era of NES. It's also the, um, well, the gameplay. Uh, but it, it's sort of this idea of, like, you're playing a one-screen arcade port, and the goal is points. I guess that's it, is, like, um, a lot of early games early NES games, so it had one screen. I think that's obviously why Nuts and Milk reminded me of the early days of NES, too, is because it's a very sort of old-school, like, you know, Donkey Kong style of, uh, of, uh, game. Oh, there we go. Come here! Whoa, what's happening? Oh, God, I just... Oh, you can fall at the bottom? That doesn't kill you? Okay. We're gonna have to use a nuts and milk strategy on this guy. Get over here and get nuts. Let's get nuts! You wanna get nuts? Let's get nuts! Isn't that what Michael Keaton says in uh, Batman? You wanna get nuts? Let's get nuts! Such a great movie. I used to think Batman couldn't get any better when I was a kid, and then they came out with Batman the Animated Series, and it was just like, what? What is this? It's like the movie, but endless. And it has an amazing Joker to boot. Plus, Batman was really awesome, too. It was a tremendous. And that show came out. You know, I remember as a kid, there were always debates in the schoolyard because there were like two or three channels that showed cartoons after school. So it was like you could watch Animaniacs or Freakazoid, but you couldn't watch them both. Um, because, you know, one was on one channel, one was on another. Or, like, you could watch Darkwing Duck or Felix the Cat, but you couldn't watch both. So it's like, you would develop little preferences as to, like, okay, you know, at this time, you gotta bite the bullet and miss Freakazoid because you really want to watch, uh, Animaniacs. You know, or Tiny Toons or whatever you wanted to watch. Um, but I don't think anybody ever made that choice for Batman. The choice was Batman. <laughs> If it was a choice between something and Batman, Batman over... I don't even know what else was on during Batman the Animated Series. Um, it was only Batman in my mind. And then they came out with the Superman show by the same people who did the Batman show. And, like, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad, but I feel like I really like Batman, and I just never got into Superman. It's sort of like Batman has no superpowers, and yet he kicks ass. Whereas, like, Superman has, like, all... Superman's, like, the rich kid of superheroes. He's got all the gifts. So it's kind of, like, not exciting when Superman wins stuff, because it's just sort of expected. I don't know. Um, but the superhero show I did really get into around that time um, was Spider-Man um, and also X-Men. X-Men was really big at the time, the uh, X-Men cartoon show. And that was actually, I'm pretty sure, a voice recorded in Toronto. In Toronto itself. B C C C C C B. 
and a password. Hey, here's another question for you guys. Have you ever successfully guessed a password on the NES? And if so, which game did you successfully guess? Um, we'll keep continuing here. Uh, but yeah, Spider-Man was really good. Um, and... Um, and X-Men. X-Men both were good. Both were really excellent. I, I still think nothing beats Batman in my mind. I mean, call me a Batman fanboy if you must. You would be 100% accurate, actually, if you did, but... Nonetheless... Oh my god, that one guy is left up there at the top. How do we even get to him? Oh, get him! Oh, there you go. You can jump on the bubbles? I guess I never realized your bubbles could bobble that way. Makes sense, though. Otherwise, how would you get up to the hard-to-reach spots? Alright, so we got whales now that are chasing us around. Also, these gray toaster-like guys kind of look like wind-up toy robots. That have gone rogue. And that's really all the commentary I have at this point in time. <laughs> There's a gem down there. Oh, we got kicked in the face by a whale. Don't you hate it when you're trying to go somewhere and a whale shows up out of nowhere and drop kicks you, roundhouse kicks you to the face? Nobody wants a roundhouse kick to the face from a whale. Not in these economic conditions. If that makes any sense. Oh god, oh god. It is kind of interesting how you don't die from falling through the bottom of the screen. I feel like it is just gaming logic. That if you fall off the bottom of the screen, you're dead. Going to the left side of the screen and coming out on the right side and vice versa is, is like a lot of games have that not not like every game but it's like it's common enough that it's not surprising oh i just warped all right to hell with that level um but coming going falling at the bottom and coming at the top now that that's surprising very rarely do you fall fall at the bottom of a level and come at the top unless it's a glitch i have seen glitches and stuff like that Can you jump on whales as a rule of thumb, or was that just like a weird warp that I found? Oh god. What do these red bubbles do? I have a lot of questions in life. How do I get my questions answered? Die, whale. Die, whale. Hey, we, pa we actually legit passed a level. Eat our apples. Kind of. That kind of makes me want an apple, actually. I'm hungry. <laughs> As I play this game, like, you know what I just realized about myself? I'm hungry. Oops, that guy just got me. Beg! The good thing about passwords back in the day, especially, you know what, I really appreciate that this game has short passwords. Um, the one game that I played that had really long passwords back in the day was River City Ransom. And if you guys know that game, that game has, like, a four paragraph long password with like letters, numbers, and exclamation points and stuff. It's actually ridiculous. Um, no, oh, okay. Oh yeah, I forgot you go at the bottom. Um, it, it is actually ridiculous, but uh, the cool thing about passwords is you could take them to friends' houses and it's like having a, a save game on a USB stick, basically. Um, like I definitely remember as a kid writing down uh, River City Ransom passwords and then taking them to friends' houses and then, like, impressing people when you plug in that password and they see how far you are in the game. They're like, whoa, man, like, you have 50 kick strength. And you're like, yeah, I do. <laughs> and your friends would be like, hey, oh, look at that password. A, B. Uh, and your friends would be like, oh, come on, man, can, can, can you copy that password for me? And you're like, no way, you know, like, this is my password, buddy. You want 50 kick strength? You... Buy it from the library and get karma jolts like the rest of us. Um, oh, a hamburger. I want that hamburger so bad. Oh, it's gone. Okay, these... This is actually the first level where you can't just fall at the bottom. And now I'm sort of like, how do I... 
Okay, we actually have to use our bubble skills. Oh no. Okay. What do we do here? Oh, that worked. Killed me! <laughs> but worked. Hey, there's grapes. Um, but yes, yeah, so I appreciate a game with a short password because, like, ain't nobody got time for River City Ransom passwords. I guess the password in this game really is just storing basic info. It's just, like, what level are you on? So that's why it could be so short. In River City Ransom, they just store, like, how many bosses you've beat and what your stats were and how much money you had and this and that. So it's, like, it had to be super long and complicated. Um... But a game like this with a password this short, I feel like you could totally guess a password. Um, although, I bet it's harder to guess a password than it seems. Because with just five characters... Uh, Abby! With just five characters, you're like, oh, how many passwords could there be? But if you think about it, each character could be one of 26 letters. So the number of passwords is like 26 times 26 times 26 times 26 times 26. Yeah, I got tired just thinking about that. That's like, okay, hold on. What, what actually is that? I want to actually, hold on, do that math. Back out our calculator. So 20, it's 26 to the power of 5. Times 26 times 26 times 26 times 26. So there's about 11 million, we'll say 12 mil, million, 11.8 million possible combinations uh and you got to figure that maybe there's only 200 levels in this game so yeah i guess your odds of guessing a password are infinitesimally small but my question stands have you guys ever successfully guessed a password for a game and let's try and guess one ourselves in this game this game likes to do a lot of repeating letters oh look you don't even get the oh my god actually it's it's easier than i thought a, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's only actually ten letters. So I got tired just thinking about it again. So hold on, this is not 11.8 million possibilities. Only ten to the power of five, so ten times ten times ten times ten. I should have been able to do this in my head. It's 100,000 possibilities. That's a lot less, <laughs> is what I'm saying. All right, let's guess a password. How about J? It is not. Doesn't work. How about Jabay? Jababa? No. Try different things here. Imagine we did stumble upon one. Jice. Jiced. No. Anything? No. Okay, this is obviously fruitless. Uh, harder than I thought. Very random stuff. Okay, well, <laughs> turns out you can't guess passwords. I don't know why I thought you could. Alright, let's try uh, another level or two here. But then we might have bubbled our last bobble. The thing I find with games like this, I think why they, they didn't... Uh, it's not that I, like, never played games like this, but it's like, I was... Uh, like, when I played Mario Brothers... Uh, Super Mario Brothers for the first time. I was like blown away When I played Mario like the arcade game Mario like I think it's just called Mario Brothers It's not Super Mario Brothers it's just Mario and it's uh, it's sort of like the bonus stage from Mario 3 It's like Mario and Luigi and like turtles come out of pipes and stuff I was not blown away when I tried that for the first time because for that one all the levels are very similar um, but in Super Mario Brothers, it's like there's levels, there's pipes, there, there's complexity in the world. Um, you know, it's not like, I mean, these levels are all different, obviously. It's not like we're just getting fed the same level over and over, but it's sort of like... Oh my god, A-B-B-B-I. How did we not guess that? Um, it's sort of like... It's hard to describe because levels aren't just all the same, but they all do feel like just small variations on each other. So it's like, it just feels less novel or interesting to me to see a new world. In Mario Brothers, when you saw a new level, you always wondered like, whoa, like what am I going to encounter in this level? And it was sort of exciting to explore. In this, I don't have the same feeling of exploration with my bubble bobbles. Um, so I think that's why I never fully got into these, uh, these sort of one-screen arcade games back in the day. 
but uh, there are a lot of levels. So a lot of, a lot of random levels to go through. All right, eat it, whales. Oh, we got killed by a whale again. Yeah, lightning bolt them. Didn't do anything. Oh no, we're trapped. Wait, how do you get out of here? Hold on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can't get out! <laughs> I seriously can't get out. Oh, I can't even land in my own bubble. Um... It feels like you should be able to double jump or something. Oh, they finally killed me. I was literally about to, like, get up and walk away. I just messed up my recording for a second, so I thought- OH MY GOD, I DID IT AGAIN! <laughs> I can't get out of here! I'm trapped. I'm trapped. This is like in a- I'm in- like in a giant menorah. I was gonna say it's a skull, but this is no skull, unless people have six eyes. Sort of in like a giant... Menorah or fork or something. Look at all those bubbles in there. This is a dangerous part of the world. Like... Okay. Literally, we can walk away from this right now. <laughs> well, we're trapped. Uh, here's one other thing. Now, since I'm asking you guys so many questions today, did you guys ever used to, like, uh, leave a video game on the whole day that you were at school? Like, let's say you got really far in Contra, but it was time to go to school. Did you ever pause the Nintendo, leave it on, turn off the TV? And then, like, go to school, and then come, like, rushing back, turn on the TV, and unpause it, and continue your game. We just died, by the way. Um, I think that's all the bubble bobble I got in me, because, uh, I'm, I'm clearly not as good as I would like to be. Also, my computer's being a little jittery, so, uh, maybe a good day for a shorter video. Um... But yeah, anyway, that was Bubble Bobble. What did you guys think? Is it a game that you cherished and played back in the day? If so, reminisce down in the comments, I suppose. Um, but this has been yet another episode of the Holiday Nesmus special. Um, I think we should fast forward time here and get to the lights. Get it. Let's go to midnight. Make it real nice and dark. Boom. Look at that. So cool. Anyway, guys. Ooh, look at my room, too. It feels like we're in a... Feels, feels like we're in a bowling alley or something. Like, I selected carpet and a ceiling that really feels like a, a 90s bowling alley, but yeah. Uh, actually, maybe I'll fast-forward it back to daytime for next time. Anyway, guys, it's been fun. Hope you had fun, and uh, tune back in again soon for another day of Nesmus. Until then, my friends, you take care of yourselves, and peace.